With only a few hours left in 2022 in North America, we take a look back at some of the moments that shaped the past year and how we covered them. Our collection of the highs and lows of the roller coaster that was 2022. At the start of the year, a new word emerged in Americans' vocabularies. Omicron. In January, the COVID variant and the surge it caused helped push worldwide confirmed cases past 300 million. As the pandemic wore on, more milestones. By the end of January, 10 billion vaccinations globally. In March, the global death toll passed 6 million. And in May, U.S. deaths reached 1 million. It is the highest reported death toll of any country. And this terrible, largely preventable milestone comes as cases are once again on the rise. Along with the human toll, new research found that for the first time, humans had passed COVID to wild animals. If you look back there, you can s simply see them interacting. Right, they're all quite a lot. They're all they're huddled all very up. very packed together. Yeah, they're all huddled up. And given what we know about the amount of virus that these deer had, it's very easy to see why they were so susceptible and it spread explosively in the herds. And in November, scientists announced they'd found evidence of white-tailed deer passing COVID back to humans, a development with wide implications for the future course of the pandemic. In February, the world's geopolitical order was thrown into turmoil with Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Millions of Ukrainians fled their homes. We packed all our stuff in 15 minutes and we, uh, we left our house uh, locked and I don't know when we will come back. How do you think one person doing something here in Lviv can help Ukraine take on Russia? If one person starts doing something extraordinary and something uh, that can actually help, if we deliver a message to society, uh, it will respond. Ordinary Ukrainians resisting Russian soldiers with significant U.S. support has stymied Putin and dealt Russia unexpected setbacks. With the war now in its 10th month, the U.S. military estimates 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers and 100,000 Russian soldiers have been killed or wounded. And an estimated 6,000 to 40,000 civilians have died. As temperatures climbed in 2022, no corner of the globe was untouched by the effects of climate change and the extreme weather accompanying it. Glacier melt continued unabated. The worst year on record for melting in the Alps, where glaciers lost 6% of their remaining volume. Cyclones pummeled the African island nation of Madagascar. In a season that normally sees one cyclone, there were six. Floods ravaged Pakistan, killing more than 1,700 people and leaving hundreds of thousands more without shelter. A humanitarian crisis triggered by heavy monsoon rains and above normal glacier melt. Our homes were destroyed with our belongings inside. Even some thatched huts fell down upon children. In this hemisphere, there were 14 named tropical storms, an average number for hurricane season. But two late season storms proved catastrophic for Puerto Rico and Florida. Fiona slammed into Puerto Rico in September and caused an island-wide blackout as well as extensive flooding. Fast on its heels came Hurricane Ian. Its path of destruction was widespread and devastating. Wind and walls of water pounded the Gulf Coast of Florida. Some communities were flattened, others inundated. How deep is this now? Oh, this is at least two and a half, two feet, two and a half feet. And it gets deeper as we go that way. By some estimates, Ian was one of the 10 costliest storms in U.S. history. From too much water to not enough, wildfires raged around the world this summer, from the wheat fields of Spain to the forest of California. The lack of rain in the western United States caused a mega drought. Utah's Great Salt Lake is at its lowest level in history. I feel like we're in the middle of just a dead zone here. It yeah. feels like another planet. So it's like a dead coral reef. It's like a cemetery. 
And as climate disasters continue to affect communities around the globe, international negotiators meeting in Egypt made little headway on agreeing on measures to avoid the gravest consequences of climate change. There was agreement to establish a fund to compensate poorer countries for the ravages of climate disasters caused by pollution from richer industrialized nations. Good evening. We begin tonight in Buffalo, New York, where there is grief, shock, and anger. Back here at home, the list of cities whose names became synonymous with a mass shooting continued to grow. Buffalo, New York. In May, 10 people, all of them black, were targeted and killed at a grocery store. The alleged shooter has been charged with federal hate crimes. Just 10 days later, Uvalde, Texas. A gunman with a semi-automatic rifle killed 19 children and two teachers in an elementary school. More than 375 law enforcement officers responded, but for more than an hour, none of them acted to subdue the shooter. I texted my sister because she texted me. She was like, I love you. If anything, just remember that. And I, I texted her like, you're OK, like, you'll be fine. You sent her that message? Why yeah. did you send it? because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if it was going to be my last day or not. Highland Park, Illinois. A gunman opened fire during a July 4th parade, killing seven people. Colorado Springs, Colorado. An LGBTQ nightclub was the scene of a shooting that left five people dead. The alleged gunman has been charged with federal hate crimes. Chesapeake, Virginia. A Walmart manager killed six people in the employee break room. All told, in the past year, there have been more than 600 shootings in the United States in which at least four people have been killed or wounded. In the aftermath of the Uvalde shooting, Congress passed its first major gun reform legislation in nearly three decades. Enhancing background checks for gun buyers under the age of 21 by allowing time for authorities to review juvenile records. Inflation was the major economic headline of 2022 as prices climbed at their fastest rate in nearly 40 years. At the gas pump. So I just had a very painful experience. Uh -oh. I filled up my gas tank. And the grocery store. The Federal Reserve used its primary tool to fight inflation, aggressively raising a key interest rate seven times this year, spurring fears of an economic slowdown in 2023. In June, a tectonic shift in constitutional rights. The Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, a precedent nearly a half century old, and erased a woman's right to an abortion. American women today have less freedom than their mothers. The voiceless will finally have a voice. The legality of abortion is in the hands of the states, and the procedure is now illegal in 13 of them. When the Supreme Court began its session in October, for the first time, there was a black female justice, Katanji Brown Jackson. In June, a U.S. House committee launched hearings into the January 6th attack on the Capitol. They are making a case that this is a president who acted unlawfully. As the historic you know, hearings like, unfolded, I've been, I've some in prime time, president interviews president and testimony from those closest to former President Donald Trump revealed how he helped incite that day's violence. So, by and large, this was a mountain of Republican and conservative voices saying the election wasn't stolen. The president was told that again and again. Ms. Cheney. Aye. In October, the committee voted to subpoena the former president. Our duty today is to our country and our children and our Constitution. We are obligated to seek answers directly from the man who set this all in motion. And every American is entitled to those answers so we can act now to protect our republic. The former president's presence was felt in the midterm elections. In Wyoming, where January 6th committee co-chair Liz Cheney was up for re-election, Trump's influence was evident. I think it's just a witch hunt. Just like Trump says, they're just trying to find to get something on him so that he is disqualified in 2024. And I think Liz has made that very apparent also. But there have been audits in all of those other states, multiple audits run by Republicans in some of those states, and they found no election fraud. No, that's not right. That's what those Republicans who ran those audits said. <laughs> well, they're covering up stuff.
just because they don't want to deal with it. But in the end, Democrats had one of the strongest midterm performances for a party holding the White House in nearly 90 years, not losing a single Senate seat and losing 10 in the House. That was still enough to give the Republicans a House majority, leading Speaker Nancy Pelosi to step down from Democratic leadership. There were also shifting political winds overseas. Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to thank everybody here and hasta la vista, baby. Thank you. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson stepped down amid a swirl of scandals. His successor, Liz Truss, was not long for the job and holds the distinction of being the shortest serving prime minister in British history. In Brazil, a former president is set to return to power. Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, known as Lula, defeated far-right President Jair Bolsonaro. In Israel, the return of another familiar face, Benjamin Netanyahu is back as prime minister. This time, Netanyahu, who's on trial for corruption charges, heads Israel's most right-wing governing coalition ever. In 2022, the world said farewell to Queen Elizabeth II at the age of 96, the longest serving monarch in British history, ruling for more than 70 years. In Russia, Mikhail Gorbachev, the last leader of the Soviet Union, died at age 91. He oversaw a series of revolutionary changes that ended the Cold War. In Japan, former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was assassinated while campaigning for a parliamentary candidate. Abe was the longest serving leader in modern Japan. He was 67 years old. From the world of stage and screen, there were several final exits. Actors Sidney Poitier, Angela Lansbury, William Hurt, Nichelle Nichols, James Kahn, Olivia Newton-John, and Kirstie Alley. Singers Loretta Lynn, Naomi Judd, Jerry Lee Lewis, Coolio, and Irene Cara, among others. And liftoff of Artemis One. And there were, of course, triumphs of the human mind, spirit, and, and body, discoveries and achievements on Earth and in the heavens. In Antarctica, marine archaeologists found the endurance more than a century after the three-masted wooden ship was crushed by an ice pack and sank during an expedition by Sir Ernest Shackleton. In space, the James Webb Space Telescope captured the stunning first-ever images of never-before-seen stars, galaxies, and nebulas. It's about damn time. In a minute, I'm and the more mundane. Dances that went viral on social media's fastest growing platform, TikTok. It seemed everyone was game to try a few steps. Athletes gathered in Beijing for the Winter Olympics, even in the midst of the pandemic, with few spectators and strict quarantines and lockdowns. Snowboarder Chloe Kim, figure skater Nathan Chen, and speed skater Aaron Jackson were among the Americans to win gold. Two of the most dominant tennis greats of their generation, Serena Williams and Roger Federer, retired. And in a tournament mired in controversy from the outset over the host country's human rights record, jubilation for Argentina after their team won the World Cup in Qatar. Sí, yeah. 2023 has already arrived in some parts of the world, and now we see what awaits us in the new year.